In this video, I'm gonna show you how to clone yourself like Peter McKinnon using Premiere Pro. Oh, are you doing the thingy video? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing the clone yourself video, like uh, like the one we did last time. Oh yeah, can I watch? Oh, well, I'll, I'll show you when it's done because I'm not very good at filming when there's, when there's people watching, so. All oh, right, okay, I just wanna know how to do it. Yeah, but you already did it. Remember, you are me. Ah, oh, right, yeah, pizza in a bit? Yeah, 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 definitely. Cool, cool yeah, right. looking forward to see it. See in a bit. All right, see in a bit, cool. Right, start again. So the whole idea behind this cloning technique is to create the illusion that there's more than one of you in the same room and you're having a conversation with yourself. And the way to do this is to film yourself twice or more, depending on how many clones you want, in different positions of the frame, one on one side and one on the other side. You then overlay the two clips on top of each other in your editing program and crop the top layer down the middle to reveal both clips at the same time. But if you do try this yourself, you might run into a few problems like I did the first time I tried it. So before I show you how to do it, I'm gonna share with you a couple of tips that will help you. Tip number one, use a sturdy tripod. And once you've set it up, don't move it at all. Just leave it perfectly where it is. You might need to grab the memory card out of it a couple of times throughout, depending on how you do things, but make sure it's easily accessible and don't nudge it too much. That's why it's good to use a nice sturdy tripod. Don't Make sure you don't walk past it quickly and kick the legs and move it like I've done a few times. Otherwise you'll end up with a slightly different frame in the background and it just throws it all off. So. Sturdy tripod, tip number one. Tip number two, don't use this all, that's two. Don't use this technique all the time. It's a bit of a novelty really, so the effect can wear off if it's not done quite properly. So make sure there's a reason for doing it to start with and make it interesting. Which brings me to tip number three. Create a character and a story. So these things always work better if it's not just a random other version of you walking into the room and you talking to each other. And there's, if there's no point for it, people aren't going to find it funny, they're not going to understand what's going on and they're just going to find it like a, a bit of a gimmick. So create a character. The character that I went for is the excitable housemate or the younger brother and he's the one that's always coming in, wanting to watch the videos, seeing what's going on and then he's excited about going off to the post office and bringing stuff back and he's excited about having pizza that night and watching basketball. That's the character and then from there you can come up with little stories and scenarios. That, that just makes it easier and a bit more relatable and people are more interested and they'll want to watch it more then. Another thing to look out for would be... Sorry, mate, just quickly. <laughs> Snip into the post office. Uh, do you want anything on the way back? No, no, I'm good, thank you, mate. Yeah, cheers, buddy. Okay, ta. All right. Pizza in a bit? Yes, pizza. It's gonna be good. Pepperoni. Stamps? No stamps. Cheers, I'm all, I'm all good for stamps. So, another thing to look out for. Harry Bow? Neither of us like Harry Bell. <laughs> you get whatever you want. Cheers though, buddy. Right, I'll catch you in a bit. See ya. Tip number four, posi positioning. The positioning. You wanna figure out where each of you is gonna sit or stand and try and stick to it. Draw an imaginary line down the middle of the screen or wherever that line needs to be and try not to cross it. Otherwise, what will happen is, and as you saw in the intro, what happened to me is you'll cross over that line. So my, my hand went over into the forbidden territory. So it made the editing a lot harder and it took forever. Well, not forever. And it took a lot longer to do. And I had to keyframe round the shape of my hand and then skip to the next frame where it moved, keyframe round it again, and it just takes so long. So try and stick to your imaginary line and don't cross over it. Tip number five. If you've got things in the background, in the foreground, don't move anything. Once you've got everything where it is, just leave it. Don't touch it. Because if you've got, for example, like the mouse here, and in one shot it's over there, and then in the next, in the other shot it's somewhere else, it just gives it away. It doesn't look very good, and then it gives the game away, and people, people notice things like that, especially if they watch it twice, and they will look for things. They'll find any excuse to rip it to bits, so make sure nothing moves in your, in your scene, in your frame. And tip number six, along the same lines as not moving anything, you wanna make sure the lighting stays exactly the same. And what helps with that is, first of all, get a light on the backdrop. 
in the background because the last thing you want is to have no light on there. Oh, it's not gonna, yeah, you can, you can see it there, look. If I start casting shadows in the background there, look, and that's on one of the clips, but not the other, it's gonna be hard to get rid of. So putting a light, so putting a light there in the background is gonna make it a lot easier. There you go. It's all in the planning. You wanna make sure that you know exactly what you're going to say and have a script as well because it's very difficult to get the timings right. So have a script for both characters, work out what they're both gonna say. You can do a voice recording as well to practice it to start with. The more preparation you do on this, the easier it's gonna be in the long run and the less takes you'll have to do as well. What I do is I film the first character first and then I put the memory card into the computer and play it back and then I'll act the second character over the top of that first one playing back and then you've got the timings right. So once you've got the first one out of the way, it's a lot easier because then you can just talk to your past self, if that makes sense. And the last little bonus tip really is attention to detail. That's things like change of clothes, accessories, things like that. So you might have noticed that I had a different watch on for both parts, changed my jeans, changed my t-shirts. And it's those little extra things that make it a little bit more believable and fun to watch because you've gone that extra mile and people appreciate stuff like that. And it just helps invest in that character as well because it's showing that they are different people. So we'll jump into the computer now and I'll show you how I did it step by step. So first things first, what I've done is I've imported the two clips that I want to use. I've got the main clip on the bottom and the second clip put over the top. And what you'll have to do now is match the audio. So you've just got to find the same points in the audio and make sure they match up. Be a pro. Oh, are you doing the thingy video? Yeah. So what's good about this is I had the first take being played whilst I was recording the second take. And that audio will be playing back over the top of the second clip. So I can match them up easy, I can line them up then. Click on the top clip here and then go over to effects controls. And then where it says opacity, click the little pen nib icon, the free draw bezier. Click that. What's handy here is to make sure that you've got the zoom level set to about 100 and then you're free to draw around the edge of the frame then because we'll need that. So I'm going to start roughly over here just in the line in this curtain. What I can do is draw straight down because there's nothing in the way of that there. So I'm just going to draw a box around that. Right, so if I play this... Pro. Oh, are you doing the thingy video? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing the clone yourself. Yeah, so I, I'm playing that back and you can see there's a definite line there down the middle and I don't want that. That's because this curtain here in the first shot is out of focus because my subject is in focus here. And as you can see here, the curtain, it was just before it caught focus of my face. The curtain is more in focus, so that's why you can see. So we need that to be blur. So what we're gonna do is blur that line a bit. So we go on to mask feather, uh, make sure it's selected and select mask path there so you can see where it is. If you go to mask feather, you can turn that up so you get a nice fade. So around 30, just for now. There you go, and it, it blends in a little bit more. So that's it, that is how to clone yourself like Peter McKinnon using Premiere Pro. And I hope those little tips at the beginning helped and give it a try. If you do do it, send me a link to your video so I can have a look at it. Uh, it's loads of fun this, so try it yourself. And I'd be interested to see what you come up with. If you enjoyed this video and you found it useful, please like it, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>